I'm Chris Lahane, the head of global policy at Airbnb. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking your time to speak to Breaking Travel News today. Thank you. Uh, we're here in Jamaica for the UNWTO uh, conference, and you've just launched your trips product here in Jamaica. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so Airbnb, as I think many people know, many of your viewers know, uh, got into travel and tourism as a digital platform where someone could go on and do a short-term rental for a house. It could be a spare room, it could be a whole house. We're now in uh, 267 million people have traveled on the platform. We're in uh, 65,000 cities, 191 countries. But just this year, we launched a new product, and it's called, it's, it's called Trips. And specifically within Trips, what you can now do is something called host experiences. And what that is, is in the same way that you can rent a house for a week or so, you can go on and connect with a local person who has a local expertise in a particular subject that may be unique to that particular locale. Um, and so examples of that that exist globally, if you're going to Japan and you want to learn about the samurai warrior history, you can actually go spend a day with a samurai artist and make your own samurai sword. If you're going to Paris, France, and burlesque dancing happens to be your thing, I'm not sure if it's your thing or not, but if it is, um, you can do a two or three day immersion and learn to become a burlesque dancer and actually appear in a real show. Kenya, you can go do workouts. Uh, with the Kenyan distance runners, the Olympic caliber distance runners. And so we're launching those types of experiences here in Jamaica. And so examples of what you can now do on the platform here in Jamaica, uh, you can go sign up and do a really cool snorkeling course class with someone who really knows the cool spots when the fish are out. You can do Reggae 101, which is actually with a nonprofit that exists in Kingston, where you can, uh, in conjunction with the Bob Marley Museum, where you can actually go learn about the history of reggae, learn about how the music is made, really participate in it. If you're here in this area, you can actually sign up and learn how to make the famous jerk chicken that exists here, which by the way is unlike any other place in the world when you come eat the jerk chicken here. I'm sure given the Jamaican community that exists in London, there's probably some great Jamaican chicken there, but I've been told, and I have now, and I can verify it since I've tried it, that the key to the, a key to the jerk chicken is it has to be made with sweet wood, which is only available really here in Jamaica. And we saw the Minister of Tourism, Evan Bartlett, uh, taking his place next to you on the stage, and your numbers are growing, number of properties are growing here in Jamaica. How have you been received uh, here among the community? You know, it's been a great, look at that. First of all, it's a very warm place generally from a weather perspective. They have warm souls here generally from a cultural perspective. And the minister and really the entire government met with the prime minister yesterday, have a very forward-looking vision, and they understand that travel and tourism is increasingly becoming a bigger and bigger part, not only of the global economy, but of a place like Jamaica. And they're really looking to optimize to make sure that that tourism is going to benefit everyone and that the money stays here in Jamaica. And so I think that they found the fact that Airbnb hosts keep 97% of the money here in the country. I think the fact that 50% of all the spending takes place in and around the neighborhood where the host listing is, uh, the fact that we can generate revenue for the government. I think they looked at all of this as, uh, as a healthy form of travel and tourism when they're trying to grow that economy more and more. And then we put in place some really interesting and I think model um, partnerships, including a data sharing partnership. We share data all over the world so governments can see what the platform looks like in their particular country. But what's unique about the data partnership we're doing here is we're going to share data with the government to help inform how they advertise, market, promote themselves globally. I mean, with 260 plus million people on the platform, I believe we have more data than any other travel entity out there. We have more rooms than the top five hotel chains put together. And so making that data available for governments to then in turn be able to um, spend their resources to attract the types of tourists that they're looking for and to really sort of build up their economy just gives them access to big data that they otherwise would not have. That's a very interesting point, and I appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much for thank you for so much for covering us and coming down here and I hope you enjoy your stay. You know, I think you actually will be a, a, a model of some of the type of travel we see growing on the platform, which is leisure travel. And so what you're seeing is people increasingly are traveling around business, oftentimes in groups. Your viewers can't see it, but you have a producer here, you have a cameraman, you have yourself traveling as a group. But then they usually come towards the end of the week and are able to tag on a couple days of holiday. And we call it bleasure travel. And I certainly hope that all of you get to enjoy a little bleasure travel while you're here. So thank you.